Hey everyone! Today we're going to be talking about a cool new finding from the deep sea. Dark oxygen. Yes, I will convince you it's cool. Let's get an introduction so we're all on the same page. It's really hard to study the deep ocean. It's cold, it's dark, and it can crush you. Researchers need lots of technology to help study this area, and a lot of the deep ocean is unexplored. One thing researchers have found are called polymetallic nodules. They look like rocks, but they actually contain cobalt, nickel, and copper. You know, the metals that are in your batteries and your cell phone. They form over long periods of time on the abyssal plains. That's the flat part of the deep ocean. We don't know a lot about this area, especially the chemical processes that happen there. Most organisms either use or produce oxygen. So this is a great chemical to start with. We know that the deep ocean is dark, so photosynthesis can happen. Remember, photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide and water to create oxygen and sugar, but it needs light to happen. Respiration, on the other hand, uses oxygen. So respiration is a logical place to start researching chemical processes. So our researchers set out to look at respiration in the deep ocean under a variety of conditions. But what they actually found was oxygen production. What? So they did what any good researcher would do and checked to make sure their instruments were working. <laughs> and they were. So they designed a bunch of experiments to figure out where the oxygen was coming from. This is the scientific method at its best. Let's talk about the methods. The original respiration experiments used a benthic chamber lander. It's like a portable lab that you can lower off the side of a boat all the way to the bottom of the ocean. It has test chambers with oxygen sensors, stirrers, and injectors to put stuff in, like algae, nutrients, and water. The researchers let the chambers do their thing for 48 hours and measured oxygen a bunch during that time. That's how they detected the oxygen production. So now I'm gonna walk through four hypotheses the researchers had to explain oxygen production. One, oops, they accidentally added oxygen to their experiments. To test this, they used chambers in situ, that means at the bottom of the ocean, and didn't inject anything. They also took samples sealed at the bottom of the ocean back into the lab to see if the process of injecting things accidentally added oxygen or caused some kind of leak. Number two, maybe organisms are producing oxygen somehow. So the researchers tried to kill everything using poison and then measured the oxygen. Three, it's possible that the oxygen was diffusing out of the sediment and into the water. So they made an oxygen profile that shows the concentration of oxygen at different heights right around the sediment water interface. And the fourth hypothesis, the polymetallic nodules were producing the oxygen. They might be able to produce enough voltage to break apart water into hydrogen and oxygen. This process is called electrolysis. The researchers measured the surface area of the nodules in their chambers, and they measured the voltage at lots of sites on the surface of the nodules. So what did they find? Well, they didn't add any oxygen by accident. When they killed most things, they still saw oxygen produced. And the oxygen profile actually showed that oxygen should diffuse into the sediment instead of out of it. So that leaves polymetallic nodules. The researchers recorded high voltage differences on the nodules. And they also saw that the greater the surface area of the nodules, the more oxygen was produced. And you can see that in this graph with surface area on the x-axis and oxygen production on the y-axis. So what does all this mean? Let's discuss. First, polymetallic nodules might produce oxygen. They could act like a geo-battery and break apart water through electrolysis. We call this production of oxygen dark oxygen production because light's not involved. This oxygen could potentially provide extra oxygen for organisms on the seafloor, but we need more testing to be sure. In fact, the researchers have a lot more questions to answer. Is dark oxygen found in other areas of the deep sea? Does dark oxygen production change in different environments? 
And how exactly are these polymetallic nodules creating electricity? Luckily, another research trip is already planned. So hopefully we'll have answers to these questions soon. What does this have to do with you? Well, this is a great example of research clearly following the scientific method. So if you encounter something that doesn't make sense, you can follow a similar thought process. You can talk out your ideas, make some hypotheses, and design experiments to test them. Regardless, make sure you keep an open mind about what you find. Hope you learned something. Have a good one. Hey everyone, we're a small nonprofit and all of our resources are free. So if you like what you see, please subscribe and share.